Welcome to the health series. This will be the introduction to the health series. All right, so this is going to be a pretty long video. In terms of the timing, I just want you guys to know that I've hesitated making this series because I thought, who am I to give health advice? Now, I'm going to preface this. I'm not a medical doctor, nor a professional athlete, or bodybuilder, or yoga instructor, etc. However, I've noticed that my friends and family, as, as well as even family members of some of my students, have been increasingly asking me for health advice. And I've noticed that they've benefited a lot from it. And they've even urged me to spread it because they think it could help a lot of people. So I do the math in English and other educational vi videos ultimately because I want to help people and improve society. So if that means going outside of academics to health or any other domain, why limit myself, right? So for me, life's about being of help in the best way I can. So that's not always a fixed thing and it evolves over time. But don't worry, I'll continue making math and English videos. The latest catalyst was one of my subscri uh, subscribers asking me to do a deep breathing video. And I've been considering doing a health series for a while, so I thought this would be a good time to start it. So thank you to that person for giving me the necessary bit of inspiration to get started. So what can you guys expect from this series? I'll be covering a lot of ground, exercises, nutrition, sleep, stress, etc. The, video, the videos will often just be in random order, but occasionally there'll be a structure as well. So for example, in the next few videos, I'll be talking about my, some of my influences just so you guys can get an idea of where I'm coming from, uh, then posture, body awareness, and then finally deep breathing, uh, and more at, way more after that. So, that was the original question, but I thought it would be appropriate to build up to the deep breathing in a certain order. All right, so there's going to be at, at least three huge themes in this series and probably more as we go on. So I've written them on the board. We have everything is connected, being a generalist, and destroying the nerd myth. I hope that um, in terms of number one, it's self-explanatory. I think almost everything is connected. I hope my contribution will be to synthesize as well as to give synthesize a lot of information that may otherwise take you guys a lot of time to come across and to learn on your own, as well as to give you a holistic approach. And this has to do with being a generalist. So for example, I'm not going to be coming at it as a bodybuilder or as a math nerd or as a martial arts expert. I'm going to be trying to combine them for, for some general health perspective and then kind of give you pointers of what you may want to do less or more of depending on your goals. So just like, so I think of it as sort of like a crash course guide and I've been, I've been told that's a skill that is of help, that I may have that's of help to people which is to distill things down to their es essence and synthesize information. So from these videos that I'll be doing you can branch out and get deeper into areas on your own later just like in the Art of Math series on my channel for example it's a condensed guide throughout a lot of foundational mathematics, but it doesn't cover absolutely everything, but it's a good, very good starting point. So if you want to be healthy and happy in every way, this series is for you. If you want to specialize in an area, you can start here to get ideas, but then you'll outgrow what I'm presenting and you'll need to look elsewhere eventually. So you can get ideas from anywhere across many disciplines and improvement or a lesson learned in one can lead to improvement in another area. And that's the whole premise of number one. In addition, I'm most interested in the really high level stuff like principles and big ideas and core skills. And the health and fitness series will involve all pretty much the same skills as the English and math video. So for example, creativity. Now how's that going to be related? It might be coming up with your own physical exercises problem solving. So let's say you have some sort of troubleshooting some sort of health issue or a strength gain issue. You, you, you've stopped progressing in your exercises. Critical thinking. And again, I want to make a disclaimer. I'm not a medical doctor. So these, these are things that work for me. So, you know, take my advice at your own risk. So critical thinking, improving habits. So that, that's just an up arrow, improving habits, having fun along the way. Some, a lot of people, including myself in the past, 
have been very uptight. So it's, it can be quite difficult to just learn to relax and enjoy the moment. If we're lucky, maybe we'll even develop some extra empathy, who knows? Uh, and then focusing on the process versus the product. So oftentimes, kids, adults, whatever, they just want the result. They want the achievement, but they don't really want to enjoy the process or even work at it. So if you're enjoying the process and focusing on the process, the product will work out by itself and it'll be much more fun. So those, that's just to show you guys that this is really not a different thing. This is very much related to English and math and hence everything is going to be interconnected. Now, my aim in these videos will also be to add value to your life and not just give you one-off little useless pieces of information. So I'll do my best to relate things to different areas of life, including academics. Now, in terms of being a generalist, number so this second point, I think I'm going to have a pretty unique take on it. So it's still fairly new, but I'm not very unique in that respect. Uh, one of the people I've learned a lot from, uh, Ido Portal, you guys can look at him up online, many of you may have already heard of him. He stresses this for movement, and he stresses not specializing in one area to both for your development, but also to avoid injury. So other, like who are, and I want to kind of extend that to not just movement, but to life. So uh, two people there's uh, that I admire in history, we have Leonardo da Vinci, there's recently a guy by the name of Jacques Fresco. So they're both Renaissance men, and they've, they haven't just specialized in one area. So for da Vinci, he had engineering, art, art sculpting, all science, all sorts of stuff. And likewise for Jacques Fresco. So the two themes I think you guys will find that I have a fairly unique take on are number one and number three, which are themselves related. So these are all interrelated. Um, not, and not to say that nobody has ever stressed these before, so of course people have mentioned these things, but hopefully I'll give you guys a slightly different perspective and it'll be complementary to what you may have encountered elsewhere. So in other words, I kind of said this earlier, but I won't be coming at you as someone who just wants to be a meathead or a professional athlete, but from a holistic position of just health and happiness and being successful in your careers and pursuits. And of course, a lot of people are going to be quick to point out, well, what you need to do is going to depend on your goal. So now, like I said, I'll try to make you aware of that, how you tailor what I'm saying to certain situations. So I also don't want to come at it purely from like the nerd perspective. I'd like to come at you as a, Bruce Lee used to say, as a real human being. So I don't want to fall under a label like he's the math guy or he's the fitness guy or whatever. Uh, we can do everything we want. And that's a point I want to get across. You can be good at academics, math, English, athletics, etc. Don't live small and in a labeled box. Do what inspires you and what you know you need to do. So here's examples of why being a generalist might be a good thing. So in science, for example, if you're a biologist, let's say, then knowing more disciplines like physics, chemistry, electronics, or at least a little bit about those things will only improve and increase your creative ideas. So in fitness, let's say you're a weightlifter, but you've never tried gymnastics. So I've seen people that can do heavy weighted dips. They can go on the, so like they can do like, I don't know, 100 pounds, 150, 200 pounds on the dip machines. But if you've never tried the gymnastics rings and you go on them, you might start to, to really shake like crazy. And that's because you have weak stabilizer muscles. So basically, you know, you're just asking for an injury if you don't supplement your training to create a bulletproof body. So that's one of the themes of this holistic thing. If nothing else, then for injury prevention. Or maybe you're doing overhead presses at the gym, but have never tried handstand push-ups. I mean, assuming you're at that level. So handstand push-ups will give you a much better body awareness, kinesthetic awareness, that can improve a lot of other lifts. So the, the point I'm making is, by having a broader knowledge base, this will improve a lot of stuff. In the arts, um, a lot of great composers and artists knew how to play many instruments. So some famous examples, we have Bach, Mozart, Prince, Stevie Wonder. They all expose themselves to many genres, not just one genre of music. So if you're wondering, for example, why does a lot of the music on the radio suck, that might be a huge part. There's a lack of generalists. People just specialize in a very specific thing. It's cool for a while and then it gets old, but they just keep doing the same thing. So 
Uh, I talk much more about this in the Myth of Genius series on my channel, so you may want to check that out. So why being a generalist works. So here's what I think is part of the secret sauce there. I think a lot of it has to do with the 80-20 rule, also known as the Pareto rule. Basically learning 20% about a discipline can give you 80% of the results. So even a little bit in a new area can give you the 80% boost because you get exposed to a tremendous amount of new ideas. And then you can carry back these ideas to your other disciplines, your, your favorite discipline, whatever. So by exposing yourself to a broad range of things, like if you're into math, but now you start looking at some more physical exercises, health, you're basically arming yourself to the teeth with ideas by having a diversity of influences and exposure, and that's always a good thing. Provided you're not diluting your focus from your passion projects, but there's a, there's a sweet spot. All right, so I could already anticipate a common, perhaps fairly well-meaning, but you know, not, not quite accurate, but well-meaning critique, which is uh, jack of all trades, master of none. So rather than viewing these health videos as spreading myself too thin and a distraction from the core and English math content, I recommend keeping an open mind as they'll actually help in those areas too, but in very subtle ways. So being a generalist will pay off, but it might be a little bit of a slower payoff. It's more rewarding, but it's slower. Just like, like I said, with Leonardo da Vinci and Jacques Fresco. So don't think of me in these videos as, oh, well, Ilya is just a jack of all trades and master of none, but rather as a resource, a source of potential ideas and growth. So that said, you know, for those that, that have that sort of critique, I'll, I'll admit, if you think you're going to become an elite physical specimen, and world-class athlete just by following my videos, then you're in serious trouble. But these videos can help you on your journey to become a happier and more developed human being. I think that's quite enough. Oh, and doing these health videos also allows me to express the fullness of who I am, which makes me feel good, but it also allows me to improve and think about the core English and math videos for you guys as well. So if you care about those videos, understand these will help me help you. All right. So finally, let's get, so we talked about why it's good to be a generalist, how a lot of things you can benefit from interconnecting things. The main, this is the part that I'm going to be probably most passionate about in this video, which is destroying the nerd myth. I have a huge bone to pick with this. All right. So here is the math nerd or geek or any other kind of nerd. So just insert any other subject you like. Uh, like reading books, video games, comic books, computer science, collecting bugs, whatever you want instead of math, if, if, you, if you don't want to think math nerd, it doesn't have to be math nerd. All right, so here's my rant, but it applies to other things. If you're a math nerd, then cool. But I want to show people that you don't have to be a maladjusted human being who is a nerd with poor coordination. You can be good at math, love math, and still be cool in the sense of being physically active, creative, having friends and being a great person and not a misanthrope, sociopath, and awkward communicator. So your physical and emotional health is important. There's no reason you can't do math and exercise and groom yourself and watch your diet and have normal relationships with other human beings. A lot of famous YouTubers, there's at least three I have in mind. I can't, I'm not going to name their names out of, out of respect. I love what they do. I love their content. It's wonderful math and educational videos, but let's face it, and they have you know, millions of views, they're nerds. So there's nothing wrong with that if you already like the subject, but for someone trying to get into the subject, or like, you know, they're like, hey, should I try harder in math? It's not a very appealing image. So I wanna show you guys that you don't have to be odd. I mean, I'm a bit wacky, but I don't, hopefully, I mean, maybe I am odd, I am a bit odd, okay. You don't have to be super odd to love math and be good at it. So for the non-math nerds, you can be good at math and be normal. For the nerds, focus on your health. So, okay, more nerd talk. A lot of, just a quick uh, little anecdote. So a lot of my college friends were math majors and nerds of various types, uh, English nerds, etc. Eventually, many of them decided to take up other activities to improve their quality of life, whether it was physical activities, such as, let's say, rock climbing, or social activities, joining 
an a cappella music group volunteering, baking as part of social group music jam sessions, whatever. I'm say, you know being a working uh, contributing to the school newspaper, whatever. I'm saying this because I know the nerd mindset. It's usually a mixture of three things. So first one, being in denial, which goes something along the lines of, well, at least I'm good at school or English or math, etc. combined with, so like if someone attacks you for being a nerd, you're like, well, at least I'm good at something. Number two is, and this actually is a pretty good thing. So an incredible ability to delay media gratifications, which runs something like, if I become successful early in life, I can do all the fun but stupid social stuff later for the rest of my life while the rest of you fun-loving jocks sweep my floors as I'm a rich businessman or something. All right, I'm not going to lie. There is a bit of truth to this sentiment, so I don't want to completely dismiss it in the sense that sometimes you need to make sacrifices to excel in an area. Your time is limited. So if you want to be like a world-class athlete or a world-class mathematician, you may have to limit some of your other commitments and not be perfectly well-rounded. And the third one, and I think this is a huge one, third one is just a plain old sense of fear of approaching and dealing with uncomfortable situations. Social interactions, it could be talking to girls or guys, learning how to dance, how to play basketball with the cool kids, it just feels too daunting. You can be a nerd and, I want to stress, and have a good social life and enjoy the present moment and not feel like life sucks. Life can be awesome as a nerd now, not just later. I know a lot of nerds sort of believe, believe that the future will be awesome and they'll sort of have to pay for it by being miserable now. You don't have to be miserable now. So how do you solve this? There, there's two solutions. Sometimes it's actually best to wait to switch environments so that you can reinvent yourself more easily in a new environment. Uh, for example, with me, I had a major issue I struggled with in junior high school and high school, and I had to wait till college to address it. I just didn't, I, I didn't feel I had the tools. It just felt too daunting to try to deal with it with people that already knew me in a certain light. So I'd like to get into that in some future video. So that could be one approach. Just wait till you, you're in a different position. Like maybe you move to another town or whatever. The second approach, and this is the one I usually recommend most of the time, is just to do a little bit in the direction of attacking your fears. So there's the proverb, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. You might find that the first step is the hardest. So take a chance, join that sports team or ask the girl or guy out and get rejected. But guess what? The second time won't feel as bad. And before long, you'll wonder why it was ever a big deal. Momentum, keyword here is momentum. So momentum can be very powerful. So let's say you're afraid of public speaking. Maybe you don't want to start with the class graduation speech. You start with a presentation for a club in your school in front of let's say five or 10 kids who already like you and share a lot of your interests. Then you build it up to scarier and scarier situations. But at that point, you'll also have more and more tools and confidence so it won't feel much scarier than the first situation. Now, here, here is a part that I think might hit pretty close to home for a lot of you. And in fact, I could have made a separate video on this, but I just, I, I, I wanted to just start, start this series off with a bang. So here we go. What to do if someone makes fun of you for being a math nerd? Again, I repeat, someone makes fun of you for being a math nerd, here's what I recommend. There'll be a few things. So, Part A, so first one, is to just have the right mindset, which is math or whatever else you're into actually rocks and they're just wrong. So just know that, that that part of it, don't worry about that part. And to frame it in a larger context, I think we need to reverse the culture in the US as well as around the globe to celebrate learning and nerdiness. We gotta celebrate you nerds. Have to celebrate you nerds. Um, and, and, and not make fun of it. So, being a nerd means you're quirky, uh, likely awesome, and like to get into things in depth and excel at them. So you like doing difficult things and you're probably not a sheep. You're probably a responsible and serious person who has a lot of interesting things to say. And you don't, you don't enjoy mindlessly consuming pop culture. So we need to celebrate you. 
I want to stress that the academic and non-academic, whether you're into comic books, video games, stamp collecting, whatever, that all of that stuff is excellent and it's not something we need to view as something you need to fix. So there's nothing wrong with you. My concern is whether you're living your life to its fullest potential though. So, and by the way, in case you haven't noticed, nerds rule the world. So the first part of it is just math or whatever your nerd passion is, is awesome. So there's nothing wrong with that. Here is where I think a lot of you might, might have sort of, you might just have to listen to this twice or it might rub you. It may not work jive with you right away. So I also think we should be honest. So it also means that you need to consider that you do or you might have a physical, athletic, social weakness and not be in denial and hide behind and saying like, well, at least I'm good at math. So half, so basically half of what the person is saying is useful to you, even though it may be delivered in an unkind, most often, most often times unkind and unempathetic way. So they may not have your best interests at heart, but you can use whatever they've said to your advantage. You can be good at math and athletics and feel good physically, socially, so perhaps you should work on those areas and actually thank the person that tried to hurt you for helping you realize that. They just did you a huge favor. So imagine the shock on their face if you thank them for helping you realize this. But you have to do it in a genuine way, not a sarcastic way. They, they're going to be shocked that you're not insulted. In fact, if you, if you didn't care, here's the thing. If you didn't care about being a nerd and unhealthy or unfit or not socially popular or whatever other things, um, you'd probably find that their comments wouldn't bother you at all. So for example, here, here's an example I like. So if I were 500 pounds, I, I, I'm a huge fat person, I'm 500 pounds, and I told a bodybuilder who's super like in shape, super thin, whatever, lean muscle, if I told them that he or she was fat, they wouldn't get upset. They'd probably laugh at me. But let's reverse that around. So. If the bodybuilder now told me, the 500 pound, pound fat guy, that I'm fat, I might get a little upset. That might get under my skin. So, what, you know, in that case, what would I be upset about? So, what that person would be upset about is not that the bodybuilder had said it, but the fact that they, they actually know that they're fat and that someone just pointed it out again when they were trying to be in denial for a little bit longer. So, in other words, if it doesn't bother you, then someone pointing it out wouldn't, so if someone like in real life called me fat, I wouldn't really care. But if I felt fat and I wasn't happy about it, then that might actually bug me. So the, the key issue is what's bugging you? It's not that the other person has said that, right? So if, if you don't find, if you're happy with your friends and someone says you're a nerd, it shouldn't bother you. So if it bothers you, that, that means they're actually giving you some valuable information. So it, like I said, they could have said it in a mean way, so to ignore that part. So nobody can make you feel upset. You have the power to interpret how you feel about the situation. So you can't change what, the per what a person is going to say, but you can assign what they say a label like, hey, this is good or this is bad that they've said this. So I encourage you guys, this is the advice, say this is good to everything. Use everything. So I'm going to make a lot of videos and this is a principle I absolutely love. It's called E-P-I-A-O. Let me just write that down. And what that stands for is every problem is an opportunity. So basically you're using everything to your advantage. No matter whether something's negative, positive, whatever happens, you're going to use it to your advantage. So I apologize with the sun. I'm not sure if you guys can see that. We'll find out. All right. So. E-P-I-O or E-P-I-O, whatever. Maybe I'll come up with a catchier name, but every problem is an opportunity. So don't view the insult as, an, as a problem. View it as an opportunity to improve your health. Now, if you still don't care about health and the physical side of things, let me try to come at you another way. So if you're going to be terrible at being an... So, sorry. If you don't care about it, I think you're actually going to be a terrible nerd not terrible, a terrible nerd, but terrible at being a nerd. So I think you're going to be terrible at being a nerd if you don't have a wide exposure to many things like we talked about, being a generalist. I've had, for example, two, uh, two nerdy students. 
a similar background and the one that did just the academics was actually worse at the academics than the one that had many other interests and, and was a little into athletics and not just, they weren't an athlete, but just did, had, did a lot more things. So obviously this is just an anecdote, but the point is that if you want to be better at math or English or wherever you like to nerd out, um, doing things like physical fitness and improving your health will have immense carryover benefits to uh, physically, mentally, uh, creatively to your target area. Now, that's not to say that a lot of your, if you want to improve in math or whatever activity, you need to focus largely on that activity, but also, you know, a little bit, try, d d have a little more breadth and try some other things as well. So, if you need to look at physical activity like a disgusting pill that you need to swallow to improve in math, then so be it. It could be a gateway drug where, who knows, you might eventually even start liking it. That's what happened with me and dancing. So, personal story. I originally didn't care too much about dancing. I didn't even, I didn't like dancing, but I saw the value in it and I only started doing it, so break dancing to be specific, I only started doing it to overcome social anxiety, but then I actually fell in love with it for its own sake. So you don't have to even start, you know, your exercising or health journey because you're really into this thing. You know, you might see all these crazy fit bodybuilder people on YouTube, that might not be your thing. But when you get into it, you you might change as a person. So uh, just stay open-minded. All right. So that's it for now. I, I know I've went on and on, but I really, especially, I think that hopefully this really spoke to some of you guys and girls. So that's it for now. In the next video, I'm going to talk about some of my influences and recommend some other YouTube channels for you guys to explore as I continue this series. All right. See you guys.